Hello everyone and welcome back to another Figurehead Reviews video, and today we are taking a look at the G.I. Joe Classified Series Destro. Here we have Destro displayed in the front window with his various accessories. On the right hand side we see some artwork there, and then we get the G.I. Joe Classified Series logo along with Destro's name at the bottom. On the right hand side we get a continuation of that artwork, and I know I don't normally show this off, but I wanted to take a look at this artwork in full. It is done by an artist named Oliver Barrett. And it just looks really cool, and I just wanted to show it off as one piece. I thought that was uh, worth looking at. On the left-hand side, we do have the skill and gear and role icons that we have for the classified files. In this case, Destro is a level 4 mechanical engineer, level 1 with light weapons, level 3 black market specialist, which basically means illegal deals and things like that, and then he is a level 4 weapons developer. So very much fitting there. Then we do have, of course, his number designation with the number three at the bottom. On the back, we just get that splash page again with all the G.I. Joe artwork, which I still love this art. It's very cool. On the bottom, we have the UPC code, so you can check with your local retailer to see if they have this in stock. But enough about that. Let's get this open and take a look at Destro. And here is Destro outside of his packaging, and certainly a very cool villain to get for Wave 1. Uh, I think Hasbro did a nice job with him. My first impressions actually are pretty good for the most part. Uh, upon my first glances, don't really see any major issues with paint or anything like that. The sculpt looks good. I like the silver that they used for his helmet. Uh, very shiny, so I think that is really well done. Uh, the only thing, the only criticisms that I have have been kind of my criticisms so far with some of the other figures in that the accessories seem, a, I don't want to say limited with him in terms of like the weapons and the suitcase. Those actually are fine. I just, again, would love a pair of fisted hands. Uh, as I'm looking, none of these come with extra hands, and that is... I don't know, I just I want to be able to do some hand-to-hand -hand combat with the Joes, and it's frustrating that we're not able to do that. Now, speaking of accessories, he does come with three of them. Starting first here with this briefcase, which I wanted to show this side first. As you can see, it scuffs relatively easily, so that is one of the, I guess, downsides of the plastic they use, but the Cobra emblem looks really good on it, and then we do get a painted Cobra emblem on this side, which it makes me wonder why they bothered to paint the black, I guess other than it's meant to be at, on the top piece, but I mean, if they would have just filled in the red, it would have been fine, I think, so, but that is still very cool. They did paint the handle and the little clasps as well, and then when you open this up, you do have a pretty generic looking computer screen there, keyboards, and then the Cobra emblem at the top. And then this part here, I had done a live stream some time ago to see what other people thought. And it seems like whatever the scenario calls for, you could call this a stack of money, you could call it C4, whatever you want to do. You know, the idea of if this was like a, a briefcase bomb or if it was money for one of them black market deals so uh, one thing you will notice though as you open and close it it is putting stress marks on that plastic which obviously is expected as you, you know, fold across it so if you open and close this too many times uh, over the years that might eventually break and crack so uh, this might be one of those things where you'll choose a display option and try to keep it that way for some time and then next we have this blaster, which is very cool looking. Uh, you know, it's a long barrel, but we get the scope on it, and it's obviously meant to be held in one hand. And I like that design. Uh, you know, with a mechanical engineer and weapon specialist like Destro, having some sort of customized looking weapon is certainly understandable. And we get a little paint with it as well. And he does hold it quite nicely, actually. No real complaints there. That fits in. Uh, really well. In fact, the trigger finger rests nicely on the trigger, so it's a good looking gun, and I think they did a good job with that. And then lastly, we get this smaller golden sidearm that he has, and I mean, that one's pretty good looking too. It's just cast all in gold. One thing I will say though is the trigger was very a very tight squeeze for his finger. I couldn't get it in all the way, so originally it was kind of maybe like that. And obviously that wasn't straight, so I had taken a uh, tool that I have that just fit in there, and just basically I had to sort of stretch out that uh, opening there so that I could get his finger the rest of the way through the uh, and resting on the trigger. So And it didn't do any damage to it, so that was good. But it's a good-looking piece of weaponry, and then that is going to have a holster here that you can just pop it down, and then you have holster uh, a holster for that sidearm. 
Now in standing straight up, Destro is coming in at about 6.5 inches tall, which makes him 16.5 centimeters. So he is a taller character. In fact, I pulled up his bio and said he should be about 6 foot 3. So yeah, he's, he's a tall character. But since he doesn't come with any other accessories, let's go ahead and just jump in and take a look at the paint and sculpt on Destro. And getting up close here, I mean... That is a really cool looking head sculpt. I tried to change the light so we can at least see it a little bit more so it's not too overexposed, but we get some panel lines there of the mask and then just the furrowed brow, the face, everything looks really good. Bringing the light back in here, the eyes, yeah, really well done. It looks like they're not cross-eyed or anything like that that I had with Roadblock, but very cool and I like the reflectiveness of it. I mean, it is quite shiny. In fact, I mean, that is probably the case. Yeah, look at that. You can see the reflection of like my finger. So very reflective uh, material, and I like that a lot. And then going down too, they did the neck with that same color, and you even have the bolts there for where it uh, goes on. So really well done with the uh, the head sculpt and the choice of the material for it. I mean, makes me wonder what if we would have had Silver Surfer. I don't think Silver Surfer was that reflective, was he? I don't think so. Uh, he does have this little pendant here hanging around his neck. Uh, which came out fine, just cast in gold, little red paint on it. The high collar here, which I feel really silly for this. I never noticed that it was basically like the hood of a cobra. <laughs> I don't know why I never paid attention to that, but that is really cool, though. I, I do like the look of it, and it's just painted red on the inside. And then going down the rest of the body, not a whole lot to it, just a general suit of, I guess, I don't know if you'd call it a suit of armor, but you get a little bit of paint here on just some of these panel lines, and then the rest of it does look like it's a fabric material. He does have the metal there on the forearms. On this side, we do get these little rockets here on the wrist. They are not removable. They are stuck on there, so no problem with that, though. Uh, as I mentioned, we don't get any fisted hands. You're just going to get the trigger hands, which, like I said, just one fisted hand, even if I had to make a sacrifice. Uh, looking at the belt, so cast in the silver there, or actually, nope, just kidding. It's actually is it cast in the red then, I assume, because, yeah. So I guess it must be cast in the red and then painted with the silver. And it looks pretty good. That's not too shabby. And it does go down to the red here, and we see just a pouch there, an extra magazine, and then the holster there for that weapon. The sculpt work on the rest of the, the pants and stuff like that, I mean, I love the fabric lines and things like that. Like, it came out really good. And you even do get a little bit of a texture here. Almost looks like he's probably wearing, like, a, a leather suit, or at least has leather patches on, like, these parts. Any of these up here have that? Yeah, so... Yeah, that's a really subtle detail there is with that texture on some of those inlaid pieces. So really well done. You get the knee pads, and then you get some pretty cool-looking boots. And nothing special. I was wondering if, like, there would be a Cobra logo there and the, uh, the treads. But, I mean, really good-looking figure, actually. You know, as I look at this, I don't really see too many paint blemishes or anything to be concerned about. I mean, the closest is right here where it gets a little bit fuzzy, but... Yeah, this came out looking really good. I, I like this. Now, looking at the articulation, so you have a head that would be able to go all the way around, but he is going to hit that collar. He can look down. Um, boy, is that it? Is that as far as I can get him to look down? Uh, I felt like a little snap there. So, no, he does look down, which is not bad. Boy, it just seems really stiff. There we go. And then he can look up a little ways, too. Very ratcheted. And then with the Joes, we do have a little bit of mobility there in the neck. So at the base of the neck, you can see that move as, as well. So you do get a little bit of movement there just for some side to side. And then we do have shoulders that come up eh, ever so slightly beyond 90. Full rotation. He does have a bicep joint here, or I'm sorry, a uh, butterfly joint which does give you a little bit back and forth. Nothing as deep as what we've seen with some of the Marvel Legends, but even having a little bit of that extra flexibility on a large character like this is really nice. You do have the bicep swivel, double-jointed elbow, then you do have rotation, and then at the wrists, I've said this before with Legends, I prefer this ulnar and radial type of hinge on characters that are holding weapons, or at least on weapon-holding hands, and uh, that's what we get with this one on both hands. So I am really pleased that we at least have that going on. Get that. 
shoulder back down. There we go. And then we do have a very deep ab crunch forward and backwards. Now that, of course, is being amplified by this waist rotation as well, which I love that. You get the full swivel, you get some side to side, and then you can help with those ab crunches and that flex backwards. Obviously, you'd never go that far back, though. So I do like that type of uh, joint. As with the other Joes, you do have the drop-down leg joints or hip joints there, so you can get very far down. You can see there's that drop-down in action, and then you can pop it back up. But because you have that drop-down, kicks very far forward, and if you needed him to kick backwards a little off to the side, he can do that. And then does he have the same? He does. Man, that is really cool that they did that. This is a soft material that goes over a plastic piece so that when you do flex it backwards, you actually have a little bit of give in that. And they did the same thing with the roadblock. So I'm really liking that. You have an upper thigh cut, double jointed knees, boot cut, and then a hinge and ankle pivot. And that is going to do it for this review, everyone. So overall, I really, really like this Destro figure. He doesn't have the gumminess in the hip joints that I talked about with Roadblock and Snake Eyes, so he feels a lot sturdier. I think the overall design was well done, and I've commented about the value, you know, paying $20 for a figure that doesn't come with a Build-A-Figure piece, and on top of it, not getting a ton of accessories, you know, getting a similar amount of accessories that we see with uh, like Marvel Legends in terms of weapons and, and whatnot. Uh, I still would love just some fisted hands. Like, that would actually make it for me. But as I kind of thought about it, too, I mean, we're dealing with a new line. We're looking at unique body sculpts. You know, it's not like they're just reusing a Bucky cap. So at the same time, when I've said that, you know, the value isn't there at $20, if I pull back a little bit and just think about it, the fact that we have unique sculpts for all of these figures so far in Wave 1 and we're not getting reuses... I mean, it's there. You know, I, I don't want to be too nitpicky. And I know that uh, making figures and things like that with new body molds and whatnot has a significant cost to it. So as this line continues on, and hopefully it does continue on, uh, you know, we'll start seeing more and more reuses. Obviously, we already have a second Destro, a second Roadblock, you know, two Snake Eyes already. So we're going to start seeing more of those reuses. And perhaps once they hit kind of like a break-even point, maybe, uh, then we'll start seeing maybe a ramp up with accessories and things like that. So that's my thought on it. But this is definitely an amazing figure. Very well done. Sturdy construction. And I really couldn't find anything... Uh, to really complain about other than just the lack of uh, you know fisted hands or just other hands in general. So uh, with that being said, let me know what you think down below. If you have this line, uh, as we're continuing on with these reviews, I'm you know obviously seeing these for the first time. So I want to know what you think. Leave a comment down below and let me know. Make sure to subscribe for the rest of the G.I. Joe Wave 1 reviews. And aside from that, thanks for watching my videos and have a great day.